Look at that. We're live again. Bam. 26th time. Episode 26. Haven't missed a week. I know. This is great. So great. Every Wednesday. Every Wednesday at four. Scheduled. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah. Well, we'll yeah. Wanna... This is a great... How have we not procrastinated on this? Let's <laughs> yeah. dissect and reverse engineer what we've done to not procrastinate on this pro podcast. Uh, <laughs> so today, that's today's episode, how to overcome procrastination. Mm -hmm. And the reason we want to talk about this is because, I mean, Lisa deals with it. I deal with it. Nate deals with it. Everyone in our academy deals with it. Everyone who's not in our academy deals with it. Like, it's just a thing <laughs> that, that we deal with and we don't like to deal with it. Like, it's not... It's not fun to know that we're procrastinating. Um, and I used to think like, I used to think I just sucked mm. at getting stuff done. I thought that was just me, but I realized it's not like an identity. It doesn't need to be an identity. Like you don't need to be a procrastinator. You don't need, you don't need to identify with that. I've learned that like, if you just set up these systems that we're going to share with you here in today's video, you, procrastination is like, it becomes a thing of the past for the most part. Mm -hmm. For the most part, and, when, little... and then when you find yourself procrastinating on something, you just implement, yeah, the things on that specific because you can procrastinate in anything like diet, exercise, yep. business, reading a book. Like you can procrastinate all over the place. So if you feel like you are, you just got to take some action. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll tell you exactly what action to take mm -hmm. in this video in order. Actually, we'll break down the order, and so you have like a checklist that when next time you procrastinate, you go through this checklist. Yeah. Right. So, and, and I'll, I'll say too, like by over, I, I remember before I even got into online sales, I really wanted to get into online sales. I really wanted to put together a webinar and create a course, but I just kept putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. And then once I did this, I got it done. And that month went on to be my first ever big month of sales made like 18 grand because I use these techniques that I'm going to mm -hmm. share with you. So if you've been putting something off and you know you got something in you that, that you can sell, but you're just putting it off and you're being lazy or whatever, um, just use these techniques. These will come in handy. So first one is really getting clear. And again, this is a checklist in order. So first things first is ask yourself, are you clear on your vision? Mm -hmm. The vision, uh, like the big vision of how you want to live your life as a whole and the vision of like how you want your days to be. Like there's your life and there's your days. It's like, are you clear on both like the micro and the macro? Um, and if you're not clear on that, then, then of course you're procrastinating because the thing that you think you should do maybe doesn't even belong in your life. Maybe you don't need to do that gardening project. You know? mm -hmm. Maybe you don't need to, you know, build that skate park in your backyard or something like maybe that's dumb. Maybe because your vision is to like go move to Thailand. If that's the case, then sell all your shit, and move to Thailand. Done. Procrastination is done. Don't worry about the skate park, you know? <laughs> so it could be that simple. Just getting clear on your vision and realizing that that thing you're procrastinating on doesn't even belong. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you get really micro about it, like really narrow in on like the clarity and getting clear on your vision, it's like, let's say you want to launch this business. Okay. That's a very vague and nebulous term and nebulous phrase like, oh, I just launch a business. I'm procrastinating. Well, what the hell is actually launching a business entail? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's maybe all you have to do. And I find this a lot with our students, like when creating high ticket programs, maybe all you have to do to, to launch your business is open an Instagram account. Mm -hmm. Upload a profile picture, upload your bio and upload like 12 photos. And you've like, you're well on your way now to starting your business. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I know it feels really overwhelming because there's so many steps to do, but breaking it down into little steps, little things that you can do, because when you look at it, it's all overwhelming. You don't want to do any of it because you're like, I don't even know what I don't. We have to go down to like the one at a time. And that's what um, helped me to build my first ebook right, is I had this like stack of sticky notes and I wrote down every thing that I had to do for building it. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, 
even down to ads. It doesn't have to be in order. All you have to do is write, brainstorm everything that you could possibly do, like buying the groceries for the recipes, writing out the recipes, getting certain kitchen tools for the recipes or whatever. Just write out everything you possibly could have on each step on individual sticky notes. And then you lay them out all on the floor. And then one at a time, you start with the most, the very, 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 very first thing that you need to do. Mm -hmm. So you grab that one and you put it on the bottom, right? And then you look, what, what do I need to do after that? Then you grab that one and then put it down and then grab the next one. And you just keep going until you get to the end, which is you launch your book or you launch your course or whatever. And then you flip the note, uh, the sticky notes over. And then you just do one at a time. Oh. You look at it. You're like, open an Instagram page. Okay. That's all I have to focus on right now. It's part yeah. of the stack of the goal. Yes. That's it one thing and you can't even see the other steps mm -hmm. hidden beneath that uh, the first step right yeah. hidden behind the next step that's so key that's so key and this this is this is the vision clarity it's 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 being clear on that next step and making sure that that's like i said it's in alignment with your with your macro vision mm -hmm. so that's huge the, the the sticky note technique awesome in the academy, you have a checklist, and I tell people before they even go through the checklist, I put two warnings in there. I'm like, warning, go through the checklist like this. And in that like this video, I'm like, zoom in to each piece of the checklist so you can't see the whole checklist. Like, make sure you zoom in and you're only looking at that one step. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I get overwhelmed when I look at the checklist. It's too much. So, because our brains don't work like that. And, and what's cool about what you said about writing out everything, what you're going to find, what people are going to find is like, okay, launching a business sounds like a lot of work, but what you'll find is that there's actually a finite amount of steps mm -hmm. when you write them down. But until you write them down, it feels infinite. It's like yeah. a black hole. It's like, oh, it's never ending. I'm never going to be able to get it all down. <laughs> but then you write it down and you're like, oh, I've only made it through like three quarters of the page and now I'm done. Like that's, those are the only things I need to do. Mm -hmm. It's, I can't write anymore. Like there's no more tasks to do. It's finite. So that helps so much with like stress and overwhelm. It's like, yo, there's only like 17 things I need to actually do. So that's clear vision. That's first step. Ask yourself, have you gotten clear on your vision, both macro and micro? That's first thing. Second thing is, is I love this one. The PAD, the PAD set in a PAD, PAD. What's a PAD public. Publicly announced deadline. deadline. I love the quote. If it wasn't for the last minute, nothing would ever get done. Yeah. <laughs> CEOs, CEOs, every company know this. That's why every department runs on deadlines. Mm -hmm. That's why there's quarterly, you know, there's quarterly reports from all big companies. Tesla has them. Apple has them. IBM has them. Microsoft has them. Amazon has them. These quarterly reports. Because there's these deadlines and it's like, they got to meet their deadlines. If they don't, people get fired. If mm -hmm. they do, the people get a raise, you know, it's just how we, how it needs to be done. And like big companies know this. Why don't we use this as well for ourselves? Cause it works right. Publicly announced deadlines. And here's the thing. If you make a publicly announced deadline, your chances of sticking to it are, are now way higher because it's been announced. Exactly. But announcing this it once isn't enough. You need to, continuously announce like almost daily. Exactly. This is exactly what happened with my burger book. I wanted to write my burger book for like a year and it was always like, yeah, yeah, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I was doing other things, blah, blah, blah. And then as soon as we decided to put the burger book in the bundle and the bundle was being released April 1st, I was like, I have to get on this because if I don't have it, I don't, I won't be able to put launch it in the bundle. So I felt like it was just immediate. It was so much easier to get stuff done because I had everybody waiting. Not that they knew, <laughs> but I knew and I wanted to launch it in the bundle. So I was like sharing pictures of the burger saying it's coming soon. It's coming soon. Right. Like getting people excited about it so that I could eventually release it. Now there's there's still things that I haven't launched yet. Like I'm still working on my raw immersion e-course, which I started two years ago, bro. <laughs> I started it two years ago, but it, I feel like 
yes, I'm procrastinating on it, but also because other things come up and I'm like, oh, this will be awesome. Like writing the burger book and writing the soup book and the journal book. Like they all kind of came out of nowhere. So the universe was like, write these right now. So I did that and it puts other stuff on the back burner, but it's still another thing that I need to, I need to, I need to put data out there and say, Hey, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's what I call productively procrastinating. <laughs> yes. Cause it's like, you know, you should be doing that thing. Mm -hmm. That'd be really epic and life-changing, but at the same time you're doing all these other little things, which are also epic and life-changing but you still procrastinate, but at least you're yeah. productive, productive procrastination. And it's like you and I, I think are like that. Like no matter what, how we decide to live our lives over the next 30, 40, 50 years, we're going to be productive no matter what. It's like who we are at this point now, right? Exactly. Yeah. So when we do procrastinate, at least we're productive about it. Mm -hmm, for sure. Which is pretty cool. But um, if you don't have anything going on, right. And you're just working on, your course or your free ebook, or even just putting up YouTube videos, right? To set a date and yeah. tell people like, in two weeks, I'm going to release a video series on YouTube or well, my freebie or whatever, right? You talked about you getting your stuff together for the burger book. And you said how nobody knew it publicly, but everyone in the bundle knew. Yes, everyone in the bundle knew. So you, you had your team, you mm -hmm. know, banking on you. Yep. And, and you couldn't let us down. Um, but what's even more impressive than you getting your burger book done was how there was like half a dozen other people who had been putting shit off for so long, who mm. also got their stuff done because of yeah. the bundle. Amazing. That was so amazing to see because you're right. There were some people in there who had never written an ebook who had been wanting to write an ebook, like we'll use Constantinos as an example. He's been teaching that kitchen skills course yeah. at Doug Graham's retreat for like a decade. Yeah. He's been doing it all the time, every time. And he's been the produce uh, manager at Woodstock, like teaching kitchen stuff to people. And he has all this knowledge and he always wanted to make a course, never did it until the bundle we're like hey constantinos do you want to make something for the bundle and he was like oh i've had this course that i've been wanting to make for forever and he finally got it done and he said it felt so amazing uh even like richard from all about feeling good he wrote an ebook that he's been wanting to write for years as well and he's like now i feel inspired to write more and do more create more so once you get Dude. that first thing done it's oh my god there's so many success stories i love it I love it. And it's all because of the freaking deadline. Yeah. You get the, mag the power of that publicly announced deadline that it's a, it's a deadline that you don't announce once and then hide behind. I hope people forget. Like, yeah. oh, I'm launching this like next year. And then you hope people forget. It's like, no, it's like you announce it and you keep announcing it. You keep announcing it. You keep announcing it until it gets done. So there's, I just finished watch, reading the book Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey. Have you heard it? No, I haven't. Super good audiobook. Holy smokes. But he talks about how, you know, he's created different movies throughout his years. And have you heard, have you seen Watch Dallas Buyers Club? Yes, I have. I've seen okay. that. Yeah. He won an Oscar for best actor in that film, right? And he had to lose like 50 pounds for that one. Right. Role, right. I remember and, that. But check this out. That movie wasn't going to happen really. Like they, they didn't, they didn't, they, they didn't have their, shit together in a way the producer didn't have the financing for it like they didn't have any people like to to give money for it and it was supposed to cost like the budget like seven and a half million dollars for that film to make it they couldn't find a way to get the money they were like slacking but matthew's like well we're announcing it i'm doing that film i'm losing the weight we're doing it and he's like his weight kept going down 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 could get ready for the role he was announcing he kept telling people october 15th we're shooting october 15th and everyone's like but nobody's even funded the film yet He's like, we're doing it October 15th. He's like 150 pounds right now. He's like, we haven't even got funding. He's like October 15th down to 140 pounds, right? Wow. Just kept announcing, 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 announcing. Hey, 135 pounds. Where's our money? We got to make this movie. And so at the, like the last minute, like a couple weeks before the film was set to start shooting, they finally got the financing for it. And he was in peak condition for that role. Um, but he's announcing, 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 announcing. Deadline, 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 deadline. Give us the money, give us the money, give us the money, give us the money. Boom, we got it. But if he had like hid behind like, oh yeah, hopefully the money comes in. Like, you know, if it doesn't, it doesn't. Like you can't, 
succeed like that in life. Right? You gotta have these deadlines. So cool story there. Uh, the third thing on the checklist though, once you clear on your vision, you know what to do. You got that publicly announced deadline is to have some sort of accountability partner or coach or mentor in your corner. Mm -hmm. So with the bundle, we had, you know, all the people who'd already been in past bundles, right? Mm -hmm. People who had already created eBooks and courses and coaching programs. So there's a big mentorship part there. And then we had the community of the bundle, mm -hmm. the community factor, which is like the accountability partnership, right? Um, but people can, can get, like I, I used to hire an accountability coach to call me every morning at 6 a.m. Wow. And every night at 6 p.m. So I spoke the first thing in the morning is for, and the last thing before bed. In the morning, she'd ask me what I'm going to do. In the evening time, she asked me if I did it. Oh, cool. And I didn't want to go to bed saying, no, I didn't do it. Like, what, like an idiot. Like, get it done. Mm -hmm. Right? So that was very helpful. Mm -hmm. Super helpful. And that was like back in my beginning of my entrepreneurship journey. In fact, anyone who signed up for my program, I also gave them that same accountability coach. So like, she'll also call you every morning and every night. And they're like, oh my God, I love that. That's cool. So it was great. Um, that allowed me to overcome procrastination big time. Mm. And not just overcome procrastination, but instill really good habits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, making sure you get what you say you're going to get done. Yeah, and and you know behave in the way I said I was going to behave. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, not dinking around watching stupid YouTube videos or something. Yeah. <laughs> She'd ask me, did you watch any cat videos today? <laughs> yes. He's like, check. Check. Uh. So at the end of the month, I'd have a big tally of like how I did on all these different actions, you know, and what I got done and everything was great. So highly recommend hiring a, um, a mentor or a coach or an accountability partner, or even just teaming up with a friend or something to get stuff done. Exactly. Right? Which would lead us into our fourth, which would be to schedule it. And I notice like the, one of the biggest reasons why we've continually not procrastinated on doing these Wednesday calls is because we schedule it. It's in the calendar, four o'clock on Wednesdays, we get together and totally. we do it. it and, and it's kind of a combo of scheduling and having the accountability partner because we are counting on each other to be here. Mm -hmm. But we have a problem, it seems, with society is keeping the promise to ourselves. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. And it's so, it's, it's so respectable to see someone keeping those promises with themselves. Mm -hmm. Like there's certain people out there who like, they say they're going to do something and they do it even when like no one else is around. Mm -hmm. it's really impressive. It's like, well, he said he's going to do like a thousand body weight squats and he actually did a thousand body weight squats. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> right. But it's like, yeah, when, when you, when you schedule it in, uh, what happens is, is, is two things. Number one, it's, it's you've proven to yourself that it's important enough to schedule it in. Mm -hmm. It's actually important enough. So you're actually going to schedule it in. But the second thing is it does become a habit. Like mm -hmm. every Wednesday, I know that this is going on. Yeah. And, and every time we do it, it's more solidified mm -hmm. in our minds, right? Like when we're planning the week, when Nate and I are thinking like, oh, we could go do this or go for this hike or what have you. It's like Wednesday at four, I've got the call with Ted. Yeah. So we can't, right? So it's really cool how it starts to be ingrained, but you have to schedule it and you have like to show up. Church. If church, church is really important to you, you'd schedule it and you'd go every Sunday at 10 a.m. or something, mm -hmm. right? Like you'd schedule it and you wouldn't miss it. It's like, no, Sunday I go to church. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, you just, you have to schedule it in. And so if there's, um, and this is where having that clear vision comes in because you know what to schedule in. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's writing. Maybe all you have to do is write, or maybe all you have to do is film YouTube videos, or maybe all you have to do is, um, you know, re reply to emails, like whatever it is you got to do, schedule that task in. Yeah. Schedule and there's that. a reason why people go to their job every day. It's scheduled. Yeah. And they get a paycheck from it. So it's like you're going to the job every single day at 9 a.m. And you show up because it's important to you to get paid. Right. So you have to schedule it in and have it like, why is it important to me to make this time for myself to grow my business? Like going over the reasons again, your clear vision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and, and. 
once when, once things are scheduled in and, and you're doing them on a regular basis, invariably and inevitably, there's going to be things that come up that you don't want to do mm -hmm. or that you don't even know how to do. And this is where I think a lot of people, this is a big cause of procrastination right here is simply because you don't want to do something or you don't know how to do something. And so you're like, eh. like, I know for me, I'm very aware of my to-do list. I write down every day and whatever doesn't get done today, I carry it over to tomorrow. My goal every day is not carry anything over, mm -hmm. but again, inevitably and invariably, there's something on my list I don't know how to do or don't want to do. So it keeps getting carried over and carried over and carried over and carried over. And the next thing I know, I get like, by the end of the week, I'm like, okay, it's like a freaking, I got to get it done. Um, <laughs> like taxes. Oh. Yeah. It's like put it off, put it off, put it off. It's like, you're seeing every day, writing every day. It's like, come on, I got it. I got to finally do it. <laughs> yeah. um, but here's the technique for that is if there is something, just be aware of why you're procrastinating. Ask yourself, why am I putting this off? That's a really great question to ask. Why are you putting it off? It's usually because you don't want to do it or you don't know how to do it. And the solution for that is extremely simple. It's super obvious. It's delegate it. Mm -hmm. Get someone else to do it for you or at least with you. Mm -hmm. Ideally, they do it for you. Mm -hmm. But if they can't because it's taxes or something, then at least get someone to do it with you. Yeah. Right. You can provide it for them and then they... Yeah. yeah. The exactly. exactly. So there's so many things in, in, in my business that are really important, but I really don't want to do them. And I'm like, I'm just going to hire someone to do it for me. Mm -hmm. 10 bucks an hour, 12 bucks an hour, 15 bucks an hour, 20 bucks an hour, 30 bucks an hour. I don't care. Just do it and get it done. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm, I, it, 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 it's like, yeah, it cost me money. And yeah, at the end of the month, I see like a big bill, but I'm like, yo, but I got to live my life this month and I got to get that thing done. Yeah, that thing that you just did not want to get done. <laughs> more important having an extra 500 bucks in my bank account or actually being able to go live my life stress-free. Mm -hmm. I'd rather pay that 500 bucks, man. No problem. Take mm -hmm. care of that from me. I don't want to see it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to even know it exists. Take care of it. Get it done. So delegating, man. This is what separates on, you know, beginner entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs from like CEOs. CEOs, all they do, think of what a CEO does. A CEO just makes the big decisions. Mm -hmm. Everything gets delegated. All a CEO does is make a decision. CEO is not actually like taking hammer to nail, you know? Mm -hmm. CEO is not like going and like uploading his own YouTube videos and like fixing his own thumbnails and shit. Like that's all delegated. Everything is delegated. The only thing a CEO does is like actually make the decisions about like who does what, mm -hmm. what departments do what. Chief you know? executive officer. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And, and maybe where, where the money gets spent or how it gets spent or something, but it's like, it's just decision-making everything else gets delegated. So I always ask myself, like if my hands were tied and I had to run the Academy, what would I actually do? Mm. I actually, if I couldn't do anything myself, but I had to make sure everyone else did what they had to do to keep the Academy running, what would, how would that look? Mm -hmm. and like, that's a cool way of, of approaching like your to-do list. Like oftentimes if you're procrastinating, it's like, well, maybe you shouldn't even be doing that. Mm -hmm. Delegate that out. Um, and uh, given, you know, granted, if, if you're just starting out, you don't have those extra funds to delegate, then it helps do it with someone. It's mm -hmm. a lot cheaper to do it with someone, like a friend or something. Um, or just start going on YouTube tutorials and Google tutorials and do what you got to do to get it done. But ideally, in the future, delegate it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, and then this Ooh. last tip. This last one's a hard one. This last one's the hardest. Let's please save it for the end. We, <laughs> we give everyone all the easy wins up front, but this last one's a hard one. And it's like, look, if you're procrastinating, again, ask yourself why. It's usually because you don't want to do it. Or you don't know how to do it. But it also could be that you're just so distracted with a bunch of other shit that, 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 that you don't need to do. And you just got to sacrifice. Mm-hmm. You got to sacrifice certain activities, certain hobbies, certain people, even sacrifice certain people, certain activities and uh, certain habits. Yep. Like there's a lot of things I would love to do, but I have to sacrifice like watching skateboard videos. My favorite thing in the world. I'm like a cat looking at a laser when I see. Skateboard <laughs> videos. 
I love skateboard videos, but I have to sacrifice that for my life. Mm -hmm. Maybe allow myself to watch them maybe like once or twice a year or something. Cause otherwise I'll get sucked right into the skateboard black hole. Like I love them. That sacrifice is gone. See you later. Photography. I had to sacrifice that. I love taking photos. I love doing photo shoots, love doing video shoots for, for people just for fun. as like a hobby. Nope. Gone. Mm -hmm. Because it gets in the way of me doing what I need to get done. Yeah. Yes, it's fun. Yes, it's fulfilling. But it's like it gets in the way of like my ultimate fulfillment, which is growing my business. Yeah, the uh, that's where it really matters because people think like, well, but you should be able to live your life and enjoy it and stuff. But where do you get the full enjoyment? Kind of like with diet, right? Yep. Like what's what's the ultimate, the entire experience of eating a meal doesn't stop at the end of the meal it goes on to the future right so it's like do you want that five minutes of joy from eating a piece of pizza five minutes they get that much <laughs> like, a minute. like a minute yeah that first bite or do you want the full experience of eating something healthy because you still enjoy it but you get the enjoyment after yes yes we got some cotton candy ones in the fridge just waiting Ooh, yum it's Good like i i Love it from the first bite to the last, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's the ultimate fulfillment. And a great question to ask yourself is like, when you're doing something, ask yourself, like, do I want to watch Netflix more than I want to grow my business? Right. The answer is going to be no. Mm -hmm. Do I want to go water skiing every Friday more than I want to grow my business? The answer is probably no. Do I want to go hiking with my, with, with my friends every Wednesday or something more than I want to grow my business? The answer is probably no. If, if it is, yes. If you do want to go hiking more than you want to grow your business, fine, go do that. Those are going to be rare things though. You're not going to have a big list of things that you want to do more than your business. If you do, then you shouldn't be in business. Right. Every now and then though, you are going to find that thing. Like, do I want to spend time with my, my spouse more than I want to grow my business? Maybe. Fair mm -hmm. enough. Cool. Do it. But again, that's going to be like those, that list is going to be very small things that you actually want to do more than your business like your business if you're going to grow it at least in the initial phase it needs to be everything for you like your business yeah. needs to be everything yeah. once it evolves and you can like get someone else to run it for you sure fine there's gonna be other things in life but when you're starting out that business needs to be your life as if you're growing a newborn baby that baby's your life nothing's more important mm -hmm. exactly Ooh. and and that's for the procrastination right like like you said once the business is on its feet and running and stuff, then you're going to have a lot less things to do, right? Then you teach, you teach your team what we just taught you now. Exactly. They don't right. procrastinate. <laughs> right? Totally. Make sure, make sure your team has a clear vision. Make sure your team has deadlines. Make sure your team has it scheduled in. Make sure your team is being mentored. Make sure your team is delegating all the silly stuff and make sure your team is making sacrifices. Like the stuff we just gave you guys is great for your culture in your, in your, uh, in your business in your company so exactly cool it's a good I, one. I think uh i think that's that and, uh, and another fun one is uh i was driving to the airport with tim van orden one day you know tim van orden mm -hmm. yep and we were we were driving we were driving, driving the airport he's dropping me off and he always carries around a voice recorder in his car whenever he comes up with a good idea and um, we were talking about procrastination or something in the car ride it was like 10 years ago now I remember him saying He's like, yeah, man, sometimes we just got to make it fun to get it done. He's like, Ooh, I like that. I'm going to, I'm going to record that. And he went and recorded himself. He's like, he's like, make it fun to get it done. <laughs> so true. I know. And we can excite ourselves about stuff, right? Like we can get excited the same way you would if you were going on vacation or whatever, you can feel it, like feel the excitement to get that thing done. Like, oh yeah. I am going to be so excited and move like, like Tony Robbins says, motion creates emotion, yeah. right? Or vice versa, emotion creates motion as well. But like, get excited, be like, I am so excited to eat healthy tomorrow or do this thing or whatever, right? I just get so excited about it. And then when you move, you do feel it, you feel it more. And then that can help as well, along with the other things. Make it fun. Get it done. <laughs> Feel it. All right. Feel that's it. it. It's a wrap. All right. Peace out. Much love.
Adios, if you want to hop on a call with either myself or one of our head coaches in the academy, if you're not already in the academy, head over to coursecreatorcall.com and uh, Lisa and I will be happy to work with you in the very near future. Yes. All right. Sweet. All right. Ciao, ciao. Adios.